Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Math Channel. I'm now answering question number 10 from the January 2018 C34 paper. And this question is being requested by one of the students. And it relates to P3 graphs of functions. And you're told that is given that f of x equals e to the power of negative 2x um, with the domain x is a member of all or an element of all the real numbers and g of x equals x over x minus 3 where x is greater than 3. So that is the domain of this function. We've got to scratch the graph of y equals f of x showing the coordinates of any points where the graph crosses the axes. So here we have a graph of... It's an exponential graph, the exponential function. Okay, the exponential function, which is um, e, the natural number, to the power of something. Okay, so now, what we got to realize is if we have just y equals e to the power of x, then it would look something like this. e to the power of x would have this type of shape, and I'll draw it over here. Okay, it's like an exponential function. Remember, e is just a, uh, a number, it's 2.81 something, to the power of x. It's going to have this type of shape. Exponential increase. y equals e to the power of x. That's e to the power of x, not minus 2x. That's, that's like the, you could say the period function, going through 0, 1. Any of these type of graphs, 2 to the power of x, 10 to the power of x, 3 to the power of x, even a half to the power of x will go through 0, 1, because when x is 0, you have something to the power of zero, which is one. All right, so that's like the, the main function. Now, what happens when you have this transformation? This is where you replace the x with negative 2x. Okay, so if, um, you know, if the original function was f of x, okay, e to the power of x, let me just let me name it separately. If g of x was e to the power of x, okay, then... Um, g of minus 2x would be e to the power of minus 2x, okay, which is what we have here. So that's basically a transformation which affects only the x-coordinates, and it doesn't affect the y-coordinates. So the x-coordinates are multiplied by negative a half. So the x-coordinates change signs and are halved. So instead of going like this, it's going to go in this direction. It's going to be kind of like... Um, closer to the x-axis than it was. It's going to have this type of shape here. So the graph is going to go through 0, 1 still, okay, so that we're showing where it crosses the x-axis, but it's going to be on this side. Okay, I don't think we really have to show the extent of how it's, uh, you know, being squashed, all right, because we haven't got the original graph drawn anyway. So as long as we have something that looks like this, let me move that because, all right, something that looks like this is going to have to be reflected in the y-axis in relation to the original parent function e to the power of x and it's going to go through 0 1. That's enough for us to get the mark for this question. The asymptote still remains the same, the y the y intercept still remains the same but it's reflected in the y-axis and it's a bit squashed but we don't have the original graph so we can't even show that in relation to what it originally looks like so that's perfectly fine to get the full marks for this question okay so here we have the graph of y equals f of x showing the coordinates of the points where it crosses the axes okay if it was for example minus e to the power of 2x for example something like this then it would reflect in the x-axis it would be upside down so it would, be, it would go something like this because the normal graph looks like this it would go upside down like that all right but no it's reflected in the um in the y-axis because it's a horizontal transformation reflection and also stretch of factor a half okay so there's part a done then part b says find the range of function g okay g of x equals x over x minus three and here the important thing is the domain is restricted to x is greater than three and when you have a domain that's restricted, that will also affect the range of that function. It won't be the same as if it was not restricted, especially in this type of case. Now, here we have a reciprocal function. This is a, a reciprocal function. And what, are the, what, what you should really try to do with the reciprocal function is try to draw it 
okay? Um, try to draw it like um, as if it was unrestricted first, and then you can get rid of the parts that you don't need. So here we can see two things. We can see that there's an asymptote, okay, uh, where x is equal to 3, because that will make the denominator 0. And we can also see there's an asymptote where y is equal to 1, because this is an improper fraction. When you divide the coefficients of the x's on the numerator and denominator, you get 1. Okay, if we were to rewrite this as a mixed number, that would make life easy for us to understand what to do. And it's really easy to do that. Even when you've got something like this, you just take the denominator and write it down. Take the numerator and copy the, copy the denominator the numerator and then think to yourself, how do I make this become what is on, on the numerator in the actual function? So how does x minus 3 become x? Well, we have to add 3 to it. So this will give us, if we split it into two parts, x minus 3 over x minus 3 plus 3 over x minus 3, which is 1 plus 3 over x minus 3. As you can see, the, y, the, the uh, x equals 1, uh, sorry, y equals 1 is the y, is, is the y, is the, uh, so you could say the horizontal asymptote, and x equals 3 is the vertical asymptote. Okay, y can't equal 1, okay, if y equals 1, okay, if y equals 1, you're going to have this situation where you have y, 1 equals 1 plus 3 over x minus 3. When you subtract 1 from both sides, you get this situation, which leads to something which is, um, you know, a it's called a, something called a contradiction. So when you try to get find what x is, you have to multiply both sides by x minus 3, you end up with 0 equals 3. It's a contradiction. So, so that's why y equal, can't equal 1. So that situation happens when this constant here is 1. If, you know, whatever this constant is, the y can't act, equal that. Otherwise, you're going to end up with this situation with 0 equals something over something. So anytime you have this improper type of fraction, whatever uh, number that you get when you divide these two, that is going to be the horizontal asymptote. Okay, so that's how I knew from the beginning that that would be the horizontal asymptote. And the vertical one will be x equals 3 because that makes the denominator 0, so it can't be that. So if we were to sketch this function, which is always a good idea to do, okay, then we have an asymptote at x equals 3, okay, which is over here, and an asymptote at y equals 1, which is somewhere over there. Okay, so this is x equals 3 and y equals 1. And we can see that this is the type of, is you have a positive 1 of x minus 3, so it's going to go something like this. And on this side, if you were to work out where it crosses the y-axis, uh, when um, x equals um, when x equals 0, okay, you're going to have y equals 0. So it's going to go through the origin here. Okay. And we can see that when x equals 0, you have 1 minus 1, which is, yeah, so it's going to go through the origin like this. Okay, so it's going to be something like that. Now, for our purposes, all we care about is this section, because our domain is x is greater than 3. So we can get rid of this part here, and we can just concentrate on that part. So remember, this is 1, okay, and this will go up, getting closer and closer to this asymptote, never reach it. And this will go on forever, getting closer and closer to y equals 1 without ever reaching it. So the domain of this function, the domain of the values it can take on the y, the domain of this function is from here all the way up to infinity. But it doesn't actually touch y equals 1. It gets closer and closer to it. So we can say that the, dom the, sorry, the range of this function, not the domain, the range, therefore, is going to be y is greater than 1. Okay, y is greater than 1, because it only exists in this region here. If the domain was not restricted to x is greater than 3, and it was just unrestricted, then you could say the range is all real values except for y equals 1. If we were to include this part of it, if this wasn't there, then it would be all real values uh, except for y equals 1. But because the domain is restricted to only values of x greater than 3, all of this part doesn't exist. Okay, so this is a kind of question where as long as you realize that the graph, graph is of this shape here, all right, you could work out just by looking at this that the y asymptote is going to be uh, 1, y equals 1, and the x asymptote is going to be x equals 3. So you can kind of work out it's going to be 1 and above. 
without actually av- having to draw it once you can picture it in your mind. But the ability to picture this in your mind is very important. For range of functions, I always suggest that you learn how to sketch these graphs. Because it's really important that you, um, you know, picture what's going on. That's the best way to answer such questions. All right, so that's part B done. And now for part C, it says, find the inverse of G, stating the domain of the inverse of G. Now, the inverse of G is found. Um, first of all, let's call G of X, Y equals X of X minus 3. And let's change the X and Y around. That's what happens when you find the inverse. So I'm going to, wherever I see Y, X, I'm going to call it Y. Wherever I see Y, I'm going to call it X. So this is going to become X, and this is going to become Y over Y minus 3. Now I'm going to make Y the subject of this. So I'm going to multiply both sides by Y minus 3. That'll be X, Y minus 3X equals Y. I'm going to bring the Y's together on one side. So I have X, Y minus Y equals 3X. I'm going to make Y the subject by taking Y as a common factor. Y times X minus 1 equals 3X. So therefore, I'll say Y is equal to 3X over X minus 1, which means the inverse function of G, of F of G, is equal to 3X over X minus 1. And they want us to state the domain of the inverse. Now, the domain of the inverse is the same as a range of the original function. So the domain of this is going to be x is greater than 1. Okay, that's the domain. As that was a range that we found here, the range of the original function is equal to the domain of the origin of the inverse function because the inverse function is basically where you swap the x and y coordinates around. Okay, so, you know, even if we were to... Um, to draw this, okay, if we look back here, okay, basically, the you can see that the the new function, the asymptotes are y equals 3 and x equals 1, okay? x equals 1 makes this undefined, and y equals 3 is what you get when you divide these two. So you can see that they've swapped around. So y equals 3 is now the... Um, is now the horizontal asymptote, whereas it was the vertical one before, and x equals three, uh, x equals one is now the vert, uh, hori, uh, vertical asymptote, where before it was y equals one. So it's kind of like the whole thing swapped around. Okay, so include the domain also of the inverse is the same as the range of the original and vice versa. Okay, so that's how we can um, understand that, and. For part D, it says, using algebra, find the exact value of x for which f g of x equals 3. So we got to find the composite function f g of x and then equate it to 3. Okay, so what we can do here is we can replace, we can basically replace the x in here with whatever is, whatever g is. So we have e to the power of negative 2 times and we have x over x minus 3 equals 3. Okay, so that gives us e to the power of minus 2x over, and that's going to be 6 minus 2x. Okay, you multiply, um, no, am I doing this? Be careful here. This is minus 2 times x over x minus 3. This is minus 2 over 1. So it's going to be minus 2x over x minus 3. You don't multiply both numerator and denominator by the, the minus 2. It's like this. This is like 2 over 1 times x over x minus 3. So it's going to be minus 2x over x minus 3 equals minus 3 equals 3, sorry. Now what I like to do to make life a bit simpler is I like to write this as its reciprocal, which is going to be positive 2x over x minus 3. And that's going to be equal to the inverse or the, the, the reciprocal of that. This is the reciprocal of this and this is the reciprocal of that. Okay, so it's the same thing as... I mean, I could have written this as 1 over e to the power of 2x over uh, 2x over x minus 3 equals 3. And then when I rearrange it, I'd get this same thing, right? Now I can take the lin of both sides. And they're asking us to find the exact value. So we have to leave things in terms of lin. Why? Because the x's that we're trying to find are basically um, trapped inside this, um, you know, power. 
and what the power, the number it's being being raised to, is e. All right. So we have to take the lin of both sides, take the lin of the power or the log to the base of the number to which our variables are trapped in. So we take log to the base e, which is lin. In which case, this becomes 2x over x minus 3 equals the lin of one third. Okay, so now we can, um, we want to find what x is. So what I'll do is I'll say 2x is equal to lin of 1 over 3 times x minus 3. Okay, now the lin of 1 over 3 is the same as minus lin 3. Just to make it more, so it would be minus lin 3 times x minus 3. So we want to bring the x's together. So I have 2x equals, you have minus x times lin 3 plus 3 times lin 3. If we bring the x's together, I have 2x plus x lin 3 equals 3 lin 3. And then I can take out x as a common factor. So x times 2 plus lin 3 equals 3 lin 3. So x is going to be 3 lin 3 over 2 plus lin 3. We can also express this answer as lin of 3 to the power of 3, which is 27 over 2 plus lin 3. Both of those are fine. I mean, I personally think this would be okay. But both of those would be fine answers um, for this question. So that concludes this question, which is question number 10 from the January 2018 International A-Level C34 paper, C34, uh, which um, if you would like to find other questions from this particular paper will be in the playlist that appears in this area. The um, other playlists that will appear here will be for functions and graphs uh, from P3. Uh, you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link and you can watch the video that will appear in this region that will explain um, how to use my channel in an effective manner. Thank you for watching and see you soon.